Hey there, millionaires. This is Lisa Vino, and I wanted to show you something I'm working on. It's actually for the Six Figure Romance eSummit, um, and it has to do with a project that's very near and dear to my heart that you guys might have seen, which was a, a rebrand. I'm, I'm doing this video on reviving your backlist and giving people ideas on how to take old books and turn them into something new. So now you're going to see the most embarrassing part of my career, which are these old covers on a book that I actually started in college and I loved writing. It's a mafia romance, a dark romance. And I went through several iterations. Uh, these were the first books I published. And I published this um, cover on the far left, which I thought was an interesting cover. I knew it wasn't the greatest, but I, as I learned more about the, the market, I kept going and getting new covers done. And I did the one in the middle and that actually did okay, but I still felt like it, it wasn't quite right. So this was a trilogy. It still is a trilogy. Uh, I ended up doing a box set and got a really well-known cover artist who is excellent. I paid a lot more for a cover than I ever have before. And I got the one on the far right, which is blurry because I don't even have the cover file anymore. It it actually fits the the mafia subgenre, but it doesn't fit the books very well or the brand. And so I never I never was was happy with it. So these were the first books I published and I was trying. I was changing covers and I rewrote the blurb several times. And I got really discouraged and I ended up unpublishing the books because the fact is the books, uh, like I said, I started them in college and so the writing needs to be fixed. And I unpublished them. I hired an editor who went through and gave me comments on book one to sort of guide me to start the rewriting process. But I never could sink my teeth into it. It, it wasn't working. I wasn't inspired to do the rewrite. I actually started rewriting them and then... I didn't feel like the books were any better, so I stopped rewriting them. And they just sat in a file on my computer, um, these moldy old book files. And I was trying to figure out what to do with them because I really love the books and I love the concept. And you might have a book like that where you're like, man, this is such a good book. And I wish I could figure out how to not not just like make it sell better, but to position it to the market so that the readers who will love it will find it, right? Because that's really what we want to do. So this is something I've been puzzling over since 2015. And I'm going to tell you some of the steps I went through to put together my thought process to, to get the packaging right. But let me tell you kind of how it went. I ended up deciding to go with what Chris Fox would call the nuclear option. He wrote a book called Relaunch Your Novel. And I read that when it first came out and didn't do much with the information, except it got me thinking. But he says, if, you know, all else fails, this is the last ditch effort. You completely pull down the book. And that's what I did on this book. And you rewrite elements and... Again, I am not recommending you do this with most books. Uh, rewriting is a huge process and it's risky because unless you really know what you're doing, you've really thought it out, you might not even make it the book better, right? And I couldn't. I knew that my rewriting skills weren't, it wasn't happening for this book. So I ended up um, taking the concept, same concept, same characters. It's a mafia romance. It's based on a Greek myth. I really love this myth. And it turns out a friend of mine, Stasia Black, loves the myth also. And she was like, one of the first books I wrote was based on the same Greek myth. And I love this concept. And I was a little nervous, but I handed her the moldy old book files and said, listen, if you could help me fix this book, we could co-write it, right? And in the end, it worked. You know, I was totally ready for her to come back to me and say, this book is awful and never mention it again, right? I was just going to pretend it. I had never told her about it. But she did come back and say, you know, there's something here. And she completely rewrote book one. I mean, we she was cutting chunks like crazy. The, the characters are the same. She added some characters. And we went over it together. It wasn't just, you know, she wrote it and then published it. We She would 
redo chunks and then hand it off to me and I put in my thoughts and I wrote some scenes and rewrote some of her scenes. It was a collaborative effort. So we co-wrote this book. And to me, this was breathing new life in my books because these books were dead in the water. And I was totally happy to share profits and share a co-write with Stasia because otherwise these books would have never seen the light of day. And I believe in these books. I, I love the story. So I completely unpublished these books in t early 2018. So we published them this summer. So uh, over a year later. In fact, I had forgotten that I had unpublished them so late. I thought it was years ago, like 2017, that I unpublished them. But I looked at the unpublished date on Amazon uh, today, and it was like March 11th, 2018 or something. Anyway, so they were down. I lost all the good reviews and the bad reviews, which is fine, because the book really is very different. And I made it clear to my fans, look, I have rewritten this old trilogy, but a lot of my fans had never read it. So I, I felt like I was giving them something honestly that was new, but I didn't make it a secret that they might have read it before if they were my diehard fans, right? You know, the five of them who loved the book. <laughs> God bless them. <coughs> anyway, I, I do have a bigger platform and I knew now how to package and brand the book. The guy in the suit, um, how did I figure it out? Well, I'll tell you. I would go to BookBub, you know, I read Relaunch Your Novel by Chris Fox, but then I would go to BookBub and I would study books in the dark romance subgenre and I would see which ones got deals and how they were presented. And then I matched, you know, those ideas to what I felt would best make the book shine, okay? And I'm always watching Amazon Top 100. And more than that, I'm always reading dark romance authors and mafia uh, authors and getting into their series and studying how their covers look. And, you know, I had a swipe file. So when I went to the excellent, excellent cover artist, Jay Ahir, she was able to come up with a couple different concepts. And this is the one we went with, the guy in the suit. And then we were able to do a really cool one for the third book. It's The Lady in Red. So the results were we spent heavily on ads for book one. Right out of the gate, it was profitable. So we were comfortable with reinvesting a lot of those profits back into book one. And book two and three then had thousands of pre-orders, which was cool. To me, that was kind of proof that we weren't just spending on ads and driving book one. You know, book one was profiting and book two and three were naturally getting sales. All of the books hit top 100. You may have seen that if you read Dark Romance or follow, um, you know, Dark Romance. And we were able to profit. I'm very happy. I'm receiving huge checks. And I've had my best month uh, in August. I made I made $71,000, guys, which is insane because I used to make less than that in a year before I was an author. So anyway, things are going really well. And I just wanted to do this video to show you, uh, maybe give you an idea of how you could look at some of your old books. And I encourage you not to do the nuclear option. I would encourage you to start small because this was a lot of work and a lot of thought and kind of a year's process of, you know, processing how to position these books to the market. But I hope this inspires you and it's giving you a little taste of what's going to be in the Six Figure Summit with Anne, Anne Marie Meyer and I are really going to pack that summit with a lot of good stuff I, again, I do want to share a ton with you guys and, you know, you don't have to pay for it. I just want to give back. But Anne-Marie and I did want to do this summit where we kind of pack it in and give people one-on-one -on -one advice. And honestly, it's not rocket science. I really think that you could find a lot of the advice out there for free. You, you can read like all of Chris Fox's books and you can take ad courses like I took four ad courses this May and get a lot of the information. But Anne-Marie and I are going to put it all in one place and then we're going to give you guys one-on-one -on -one advice. So you could come to us, you could post in the Facebook group, um, in the course, your covers, and we could help you do this thought process. And hopefully all our combined knowledge would help you move forward in your career. So I'm encouraging you to check out the course 
And if it looks right for you to go ahead with it, and if not, you know, don't worry about it. I'm glad for you to guys to soak up whatever you can in this group. And I thank you all for being here because you guys are also sharing your knowledge. And I hope this inspires you because this was pretty cool. You know, you have a book that maybe never, maybe you're just in love with it and you feel like you could just change a few elements and it would find even more readers who love it. And that is, that's the goal here, guys. I talk about money and, you know, wanting to make six figures and millions. But the way we do that is we give tons of values to the reader. So if you have a good old book that you, you believe in, you know, I hope you can reimagine it and let me know if I can help. All right. Talk to you guys later.